web scraping has always been important. Of course it is. The internet is full of information that we all need to make better informed decisions. And instead of gathering all of that data by ourselves and then cleaning it up, organizing it, well, we could just have a bot with some code do it for us. Or two. Or more. And now with AI, we can take web scraping to a whole different level. Since LLM models don't just need data, but it can also organize it and make insights out of it. It's a match made in heaven with lots of possibilities. But there's only one problem. Many sites and platforms are putting more and more restrictions to how we access our data. Anti-bot measures are slowly but surely becoming the norm, which makes most of these bots uh, useless. Now, there have been solutions in the past, such as using a proxy. But nowadays, a lot of proxies are getting detected. So we need a better cover, a better proxy. Now, if you're web scraping without any issues, that's great. But if you are facing some of the issues that I'm talking about, let's talk mobile proxies. These proxies will mask our IPs in a different way, making our bots almost impossible to detect. And this is thanks to the technology used by mobile carriers called CGNAT. Here's how it works in 60 seconds. So in the earlier days of the internet, each device connected had to have a unique IP address. And IPv4, which we still use now, has over 4 billion unique addresses. So there was no way those will run out. But they did. In 2019, actually. So how are all of these new devices still connecting to the internet? The solution was to have multiple devices share the same public IP, while each one of them still had their own private IP. The process of translating these IPs, or network addresses, from public to private is called Network Address Translation, or NAT for short. And when this is done on a large scale, like for mobile carriers, it's called Carrier Grade NAT, or CGNAT, where many devices share many IPs, and each time a device disconnects, then connects again, it's given a random IP from the available pool. So when we use a mobile proxy, we're actually using a typical SIM card to look as if we're a normal mobile user on that network. We can change our IP whenever we want, as many times as we want, drowning our presence in a sea of other mobile users. Sounds good. Let's go get one. Alrighty. Now there's lots of mobile proxy providers out there, so here are five things that we want to keep in mind when we get our own. Think of this as your detailed buying guide. The first question we want to ask ourselves is, do we want to get an HTTPS proxy or a SOX proxy? HTTP is when we're only going to be browsing or manipulating HTTP data. Simple to set up and effective. But if we need to access multiple sources of data using different protocols, we're going to have to use SOX proxies which work regardless of the protocol and application if they're supported by SOX. These are what we need for real-time applications like video streaming or multiplayer games. After that, we ask ourselves, do we want 4G proxies or 5G proxies? 5G is faster, of course, but it isn't available in all regions. Which brings us to our third question, which is, do we need them in a specific location? Providers host their proxies in different parts of the world. You're gonna have to check with a provider and see if that option is available. The fourth question we want to ask ourselves is, do we want them up and running 24-7? If we have time-critical operations that we're managing, we need a provider that has almost no downtime. Finally, what pricing model helps us save and scale? Some proxy providers will charge you per gigabyte, while others may charge you upfront for the proxy and then you can do whatever you want with it. So you'll want to check with different providers and see which one best meets your needs. For example, here at Proxidize, we offer all the types of mobile proxies, in over 50 locations across the US, and with almost 100% uptime. Let's actually try them out. Okay, so first of all, we go to proxidize.com. We're gonna create a free account. We're then gonna go to proxies here and buy proxies. In this page, we're just gonna choose how many proxies we need. Go to our checkout. Okay, now the proxies we just bought are here in my dashboard. We now have a mobile proxy that we could use to power our bots, get them back online, and get that sweet, sweet data. But whether you choose to go with Proxidize or any other provider, be sure to check out our community. We're building the biggest community where anybody who's interested in privacy, proxies, or web scraping can all get together, share ideas, and help each other out. So be sure to check the link in the description below if you want to join. You'll also find references for other things I've talked about throughout this video. This was Mohamed from Proxidize. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.